Today, we're gonna be taking a look at one of the cooler terrain generation mods I've come across in a while. It's got plenty of awesome and really unique features along with some pretty strange ones. And overall, it's kind of pushing Minecraft to its world generation limits. You'll see here in just a second. And anyway, let's go ahead and check it out. So this mod is called Big Globe. And trust me, it absolutely lives up to its title. The world with this mod installed is massive, both vertically and horizontally. You love mountains that reach heights far higher than vanilla Minecraft and going underground. I mean, just don't even get me started on that. You'll see in a little bit. But not just that, this mod also adds massive structures to your world, namely the trees can sometimes just be absolutely gargantuan. But I will say pretty early on, because of this mod's scale, I would absolutely recommend using a mod like Distant Horizons. If you don't, you really just aren't gonna see all that much. You can try setting your render distance to say 32, it'll look pretty good. But like, there's still a massive difference here. I will warn you though, the initial process of generating these chunks, especially combined with the Big Globe mod, is going to take a very long time. And this will get exponentially longer, the higher you set the distant horizons render distance. Personally, I set the render distance to 250, then kind of just let the chunk loading do its thing. And here, you can get kind of an idea of how long that took. Flying around the world does seem to help at least speed it up a little bit, but if you just sit in a stationary position for a while, it should eventually be good to go. And I'll also be using some shaders in this video as well, because as established, the combination of distant horizons and shaders that are compatible with it are just incredible. And I'll leave a link in the description that actually shows a bunch of shaders that work great with distant horizons. Mainly, I'll be using Bliss because it really is just very hard to talk its visuals. But anyway, back to focusing on Big Globe specifically, this mod overhauls the entire world. Not only is the terrain giant, but it's also really detailed. For the most part in this video, I'm, you know, focusing on the long drawn out render distances and how it looks and its grand scale. But when you're focusing on just a single biome, you'll notice details like sticks and rocks on the ground. There's also custom trees, a mix of different tree species within a single biome, and beautiful details like little lakes. There's also really gradual transitions between biomes, which I think is really nice looking. And there's also plenty of new structures throughout your world, homes with villagers living in them, huge branching mine shafts that reach out to the surface, massive amethyst clusters, and these awesome massive trees that I mentioned earlier. And again, because the terrain is so big, they blend in beautifully. They don't look out of place. And all the structures I just listed certainly aren't the only ones you'll come across. There's plenty more. And like I said before, there's some features in this mod that are quite strange. For example, the rivers are really unconventional. Say goodbye to them being flat. That's in the past now. They're just going to travel along the side of a mountain. Trying to navigate these on a boat is next to impossible, because the water's surface is generating as if it's part of the mountain. It's interesting, but again, like I said, really weird. But hey, if you manage to find some water, you can actually travel down. It's quite a bit of fun, to be honest. You've also got these really cool floating islands that'll generate, although sometimes with distant horizons, the visuals will sometimes get just a little buggy or just completely beyond broken. If I were to guess, this is because of this mod's extreme world height, but this is pure conjecture. Don't take my word for it. Now, as I kind of alluded to before, going underground with this mod is just, it's crazy. It's, it's just crazy. However deep you think it's gonna go, it goes much deeper than that. Don't believe me? Here, I'll prove it. At this point, I started taking damage just from being this deep underground, just to really solidify the feeling that you're digging into the center of the planet. So, digging a hole, straight down by the way, took 23 minutes and nearly four iron pickaxes. Is this overkill? Yes. Absolutely. But you know, that's part of the fun. And you probably noticed that I stopped through several different cave systems. And that's because this mod does a kind of cool thing where the deeper you go, you'll run into completely different areas. Down to a measly, say, negative 330 is where cave generation looks relatively normal. But then for a good while, there's practically nothing. It's not until you get to around 650 that you run into the exclusively deep dark area. This section of caves ends around negative 750, and then you'll reach magma agony around negative 800. This area is a nightmare. It's hot. You just burn constantly. It takes 
takes forever to dig. Don't go here. Don't go here unless you really need to. I will say though, I do think it's pretty cool that once you reach this area, the deeper you dig, the more intense the blocks start to glow from heat. Anyway, moving on from the caves, not only is the overworld completely transformed from this mod, so is the nether. For this footage in particular, I'm using BSL, and I mean, just, just look at it. It looks so cool. Like, I've seen other mods that changes how the nether looks, but I don't know if I've ever seen one this dramatic. And it just keeps going. Like, no matter how many times I jump, it just goes deeper and deeper. And honestly, it's kind of crazy, because this nether overhaul could be a mod on its own, yet it's kind of the secondary feature in a mod that only has 7,500 downloads right now. And it's not just the nether, it's also the end. The end has been transformed to the point it barely looks recognizable. Overall, Big Globe is just a monster of a mod and severely underrated. There are some features within it that I'm sure some would consider to be a little inconvenient, but I mean, this mod transforms Minecraft in a way that few others manage to do. And there's still some other really awesome features that I didn't really touch on, for example, something called Hyperspace, which is its own little dimension made for fast traveling. Although, I did also try it with shaders on, and it kind of completely broke Distant Horizons, so keep that in mind. So yeah, overall, I would thoroughly recommend giving this mod a try. It is very unique, feature-packed, and overall, just really cool. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, and if there's any other mods you think I should take a look at and review in the future, I always love to see those. And anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.